Hi everyone, I'm Dave Gaskin. Welcome to this artist commentary edition of the Terminator T1000 sketch card. I'll be watching along with you guys and hopefully providing some useful insight. I, I really hope it's uh, an interesting video and hopefully you'll pick up something from it. I drew this card a little while ago, so this is going to be a little bit like going back into the memory banks and trying to remember what I was doing at the time. Pretty straightforward, I'm using Copic markers on a, a 90s to the extreme sketch card. I'd already inked it at the time that I shot this video, and so we're going straight into the colours. I'm actually getting a little bit overheated due to uh, what's going on behind me, so let's get into the video. So I'm a big fan of Terminator 2. Um, I was 13, 14 when the movie came out. Um, and in the UK, I think it came out slightly later than it did in the States. But I remember vividly walking to school, which used to be about half an hour. And I, in that half an hour block, I had time to um, have my Sony Walkman attached to my belt, uh, my spongy headphones, and I would listen to the radio on my way to school. And I remember them playing a lot. The Guns N' Roses song uh, that came out to coincide with the movie, you know, Guns N' Roses feature in the film uh, a fair bit. So they uh, released a song to go with the movie at the same time. And uh, it was great. I mean, it was uh, it was an event, you know. You know, we have Avengers and the big comic book movies now. Those are the event films. Uh, but back in the early '90s, it was it was all about Schwarzenegger and Stallone. Um, and so yeah, Terminator 2. I've always been really fond of it. And actually, the first sketch card set I worked on was Terminator 2. It was early 2017, um, and there was a company in the UK called Unstoppable Cards, and they approached me to work on a set and it was Terminator 2. Um, it was my first official set. I'd been doing sketch cards kind of as a, just as a practice really, drawing at a small scale. Um, and so when they asked me to work on an official Terminator 2 set, I couldn't say no. And so uh, I've always been quite fond of drawing uh, characters again from Terminator 2 since that first set, which was a, a, like jumping in at the deep end really. I hadn't done an official set before, I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> they wanted them all to be in colour, which at the time was something that I didn't really do very often. I was very much using graphite. Um, and so yeah, every now and again I like to just dip back in, you know, a few years have gone by, my skills have hopefully improved over that time, um, and so I just like to see how I've improved, and you know, I drew this one, I think it was sort of uh, late 2020, um, on these 90s to the extreme blanks that were put out. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is an iconic moment. If you're a fan of Terminator 2, you I like capturing moments, and this is one of those moments that uh, any fan of the film knows perfectly. It's the bit towards the end. Uh, I don't think I'm spoiling the film 30 years later. Uh, it's the bit towards the end. You've got the, uh, the T-1000, they're in the steel mill. You know, they've got the sparks and the heat and the just the, the molten metal um, and uh, yeah the T-1000 is on the brink of being destroyed by Sarah Connor she's got her shotgun and she runs out of ammo and the T-1000 just kind of pulls back and does the, the finger wag I mean it's awesome and so I think what I've done more recently as I've become more confident with using colour is looking for references where there's some really interesting lighting uh, and the face isn't too flat I find that when I'm drawing cards now, I prefer to have a variety of light sources, so it makes it interesting to draw, it hopefully makes it interesting to look at. Um, and so this one, obviously he's, he's lit by the molten metal, the lighting in that sequence, the, the whole sequence is awesome. Um, I have a real fondness for drawing characters that are lit from below. Uh, and this moment just kind of jumped out at me really. Um, I tend to try and pick out a lot of my colours that I'm going to use in advance, but quite often I find that I just go completely off-piste, and so I'll have them all lined up in front of me, all very neatly, especially when I'm filming like I did with this. I don't like to spend too much time you know, having to pick other colours, uh, so I tend to line them all up in front of me, but quite often it doesn't necessarily uh, work that way, and I will then be reaching across and trying to find something else. So yeah, I went quite early on, right at the very beginning I went in with that Y13 I think it is, a really vivid yellow, um, just along the edges of his, his cheekbones and it's not going to show through that strongly once the card is finished but it's quite a subtle thing and it took me quite a while to get used to adding strong colours straight away so 
you can see we're however many minutes in now and it's still quite light. Um, I, I tend to, that's just been the, the way I naturally use Copix. I start quite light and gradually work darker. Um, I think it's just a tentativeness in, in the way I work. I don't want to go too, I don't want to use the dark pens too early on because it looks almost, it looks wrong to my eyes. Uh, having worked with graphite for so long, I'd almost do the entire piece in graphite very, very lightly and then go in with a darker pencil and gradually build up that tone and that contrast. And so I think because I worked with graphite for so long, that's kind of informed how I work with markers. Um, when I first started using the Copics, I was using just the grayscale. And so if you look at some of my other videos from a few years ago, they're all black and white because I was still getting used to how markers work, um, learning how they uh, react differently on different cardstock because um, when you're working for companies that are supplying the cards to you, you don't know how the card is going to react to markers in particular. They can go quite patchy sometimes or uh, they just don't blend very well. And so there was that kind of tentative element and I'd be working quite lightly just to make sure nothing goes wrong. Um, with this one, because the lighting was so strong and the colours are so vivid and bold and it's definitely orange, I didn't want to do a grayscale base layer, which is what I've done in the past, and then adding colour on afterwards. I just went straight in with the colour. And I think when I, look, when I compared this to a similar card that I drew back on the set in 2017, um, it struck me how more vivid and striking the colours are when you go straight in with colour. And I think that's what a lot of people will do. Um, and there's no wrong way to do it really, you know, using a grey base layer is absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, I wanted to just go into this confidently. Uh, so starting with those oranges, the orange tones, getting those in there fairly early on. Um, what I often find is I will flip back and forth between areas of the card rather than finishing one area and then moving on to the next. I kind of jump around all the time and I think it's because I get to a certain point where the face is coming together quite nicely but I haven't worked on the eyes yet and it just looks really odd to me and I feel like I need to know that the card is coming together well and it's working so I will work the whole card so I've kind of done a foundation layer on his face at this point um, it's not finished but I'm also going in and I'm balancing some of the the tones surrounding the face uh, so I'm starting to work on the background here and the background for this shot is it's hot metal it that's the that's the vibe that you want to get across you know it's it's warm it's heat it's glowing and I think especially on the left side of his face uh, you've got that really bright white with a, a hint of yellow to it it's a little bit like when drawing lightsabers if you want a lightsaber to really glow you need it to be the brightest thing, the lightest area of the card. Um, if everything around it is slightly darker and you leave that core of the lightsaber completely white, it will look like it's glowing. You know, you look at some cards and you think, wow, how did they do that? It looks like it's literally glowing, but they've just left that part of the card white. You know, so um, as long as your surroundings contrast that light area well, it will, it will stand out and it will look nice and bright. So it's a similar approach to this card really. I wanted that left side in particular to be really glowing. Um, and then on the right, we've got like the drips of the molten metal in the back. It's kind of subtle. And although I'm focusing on the face and it's something that I've worked at more recently as well is just thinking about the background. On the first few Star Wars sets that I did, I would focus purely on the face. And this is actually advice that I got when I was doing art at school. I was told that I knew what I wanted to do in the middle but the background was just like a secondary thought and I hadn't put any any sense of what I wanted there so it would often just be a face on a piece of white paper and, and nothing in the background so again something I've also tried to improve is my use of background and I quite like having you know uh, scenes where it's framed such that you get a sense of the background and the background is often blurred and that again just brings the focus to the face but it makes the background more interesting. Um, in the past I've done like simple colour gradients from bottom to top or vice versa. Uh, tried a few things and I think that's been quite interesting because I've been able to practice and hone my approach to that sort of thing whilst working on the, the official sets uh, which is something that I don't think I would have necessarily thought I would do. You know, 
I've often taken the approach that everything I'm drawing is precious. Because before I worked on these sets, everything I was drawing was for myself. I didn't really do commissions or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, I've learned to loosen up. And so what we're seeing here is working upside down, which is also something that I try to do uh, quite frequently. And I've mentioned that in some past videos. Um, it gives you a, a, a different viewpoint. And so, you know, you spend so long looking at the card the right way up, uh, you can often miss subtle things and when and those are the things that you notice when you look at it from a slightly different perspective so just literally, literally turning it upside down can often highlight areas where you think actually yeah if I just add a little bit of shadow under the eye or to the side of the nose and then you do that and you turn it back the right way up and it, you, you realize that it's actually a really good thing that you've done there um, so yeah working upside down here um, I often do that when I'm working on hair I find it easier to work from bottom up when I'm working with hair um, so that worked quite well on this one. And yeah, so you can see now I'm just kind of finessing, going, going slightly darker orange um, all the way around the face. Uh, and then this is the point where I need to start using the much darker pens, which is where I tend to get a little bit hesitant. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's funny looking back at a card that looks so familiar. Uh, but when I actually try and remember how I did it, I think, man, this actually, it was one of those cards that kind of just came together quite easily. I don't want to say it, art is easy because it's not, it's not at all. But um, having done some challenging cards before, this was certainly one of the more straightforward ones. And I think because it's not using natural skin tones, and natural skin tones is something that I've struggled with for a while. Um, but because we've got quite um, an unnatural looking color, you know, bright orange, browns, yellow, all in combination to create this sense of heat. Uh, it takes the pressure off a little bit. Um, I remember there is a point coming up fairly soon because I'm now using the much darker pens and you can see that I'm being quite tentative in terms of uh, how quickly I apply them. There was a point where uh, I drew on his brow with a really dark colour and thought I've messed this up. Uh, there's a little bit of added pressure I find when I'm filming. I don't tend to film the licensed cards anymore. I will only film uh, and do a time-lapse video of cards that I'm doing on you know, um, stock like this, where it's not for a set. I'm not being paid by a company to do it. Uh, so yeah, this is where the darker pen comes in, and uh, I think it was that point. Now, if I'd recorded the sound uh, along with this time-lapse, the actual sound that I was, as I was talking to myself, because I quite often talk to myself when I'm drawing, I literally just went, F and I think, uh, yeah, it wasn't until I turned it back upside down, the right way up, uh, I realised actually it, it was alright and I'd gotten away with it. And you probably saw I grabbed another orange shade and uh, tried to quickly blend it. I think with markers I tend to work quite quickly um, and if the marker is still damp you're able to use a lighter shade to, to blend it. Um, but yeah, this was a fun card, uh, so yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that artist commentary. Um, I'm hoping to do quite a few more of these uh, as we go through the year. So if you have any particular topics you'd like me to cover, uh, drop a comment below and uh, I'll see what I can do. And um, hopefully, yeah, catch you on the next video. Cheers.